Carson here again with another First Listen Review. I'm going to be doing a little bit of babbling today, I'm going to warn you. Um, of course, that's what I normally do, so no big surprise there. It is going to be about Mr. Big and their new album, 10. Um, where, where do I start? Mr. Big has been one of these bands that uh, I've just been into since day one. Billy Sheehan was a huge influence on me. I grew up fairly close to the Buffalo area, and that's where Billy Sheehan is from. So his first band, Talus, was played on the radio constantly. They played that stuff all the time. Uh, it was one of the first uh, albums I ever got was the live Speed on Ice. I know it was actually the second version of Talus, but that was one of the first ones I actually got, and that just blew my mind. Uh, he's one of the reasons I wanted to learn how to play bass. Uh, although I play absolutely nothing like him at all, because <laughs> who does? Uh, but uh, that was my introduction to Billy Sheehan, so I pretty much followed him through everything he's done. I saw, I got to see him with Dave Lee Roth when he was with, with them. Actually, I haven't seen him since then, but I've you know followed all the bands he's been in. And you know, I remember Mr. Big first came out, and I was very excited about that, and uh, was not disappointed at all on what uh, the first three albums I think they did I, I just you know played them all the time so unfortunately when uh, you know Paul Gilbert left and they got uh, Richie Katz and, and on guitar somehow I don't know what it was but it's weird sometimes when the bands change members it's okay and other times it just kind of loses the magic and not that it was bad uh, but it just didn't have that same magic for me anyway uh, so I, when Paul Gilbert came back, I was very excited about that, and they've done you know stuff since then. Um, I think it was a Defying Gravity, I believe, was the last one, and this is album number ten. So they've done a, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, the, uh, there's a live video out there from them in Japan. I forget what year it is now, but mind-boggling. I was actually just listening to a bootleg. I don't even know why. I just decided I forgot this album was coming out. I, I knew it was coming out, but I couldn't remember what day it was. And I just, for whatever reason, had a bootleg in of uh, some concert they did back in 92. I think it was in Germany or something. And uh, I was just listening to that just a couple days ago. So it's funny, just comparing what they sound like then to this album. Uh, I, I will give you a little bit of a warning. Um, it's not the same Mr. Big. It's uh, it's the same guys, except for, obviously, the passing of Pat Torpy. This uh, is the first one to feature Nick, I'm going to say his name wrong, De Virgilio on uh, drums, who's been involved in all kinds of stuff. I actually knew him from <clears throat> Spock's Beard, uh, so I think is where I first came to know him, but he plays in like tons of stuff. I think he's with Big Big Train now, and uh, I don't know, I can't even remember. I've got some solo stuff that he's done. Um, the Troya stuff that he's done has been really cool. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway, but probably wrong with that. <laughs> I seem to pronounce lots of stuff wrong when it comes to these bands, but anyway, so he's like, um, the newer, the newest member of the band. He actually has a, a channel that I follow on YouTube where he interviews people on the, what it's like to be a musician. He's, uh, I've watched the one he did with Billy Sheen here just not too long ago. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool and enlightening. And this guy, you know, gets them to talk about the background of the band and stuff like that. So uh, if you get a chance to check out his channel, go check it out. I think it's pretty fun. But anyway, so all that aside, I, I went into this being a fan of Mr. Big, not really knowing what to, to expect because they've definitely, Paul Gilbert's really changed the guitar player over the years. He kind of came out as a shredder. And if you followed anything he's done at all, his solo albums or whatever, his style has really changed a lot. He likes to experiment and um, just likes to do lots of different stuff. I was going to note that even though like I wasn't a fan of like the Richie Katzen era of Mr. Big, what he and Billy and Mike Portnoy did together in Winery Dogs, I love. So that combination there was amazing. I love that stuff. Um, somehow, it just didn't work in this format for me. So uh, I was, you know, very excited when Paul came back in the band a couple albums ago, and uh, there actually might be more in a couple at this point. But, anyways, this is the new one, and I'm just gonna get to it. I saw the first video for this one and I was not blown away. So I was like, ooh, hopefully the rest of the stuff is better. That song has not grown on me <laughs> at all. Uh, so uh, I was not, no, I was a little bit leery about what to expect from this. And I will give the, the warning like I was just about to give. 
this band has changed a little bit. Uh, it's still them. It still sounds like them, but there's no like, you know, super raging guitar solos and bass solos going together. There's no over the top. There's no, you know, they've done all that. You're not gonna hear any drills. Uh, there's, you know, none of that fancy stuff going on here. What we have is a bunch of songs, and that sounds like what they concentrated on is the song writing. Although they're a lot more fun, I think. Uh, just joyful type sounding songs. Uh, the first one here, Good Luck Trying, whatever, you know, sometimes your brain just goes and locks into certain things and tries to like make it recognizable instantly, even though it's a new song. And the first thing that popped into my head was Manic Depression. And then it kind of went into like a little bit more bluesy than that. And then kind of had that Manic Depression type vibe to it. Um, so if you're into that, that's what you got on the opening track. It was a little bit weak as an opening track for me. However, I Am You kicks in with a very catchy guitar riff. And like I was saying, there's like not, there's not much distortion on this album. Like you're not gonna hear that big uh, full, you know, rock sound like of the earlier Mr. Big. It's just not on here. Uh, Cause I could picture this song being played that way, like the earlier way and just being rock and heavy it's a little bit lighter this way and it's got a little bit of a blues feel to it actually all I, most of this album has that especially the first four um and then it's a good song catchy song i like that it's actually probably one of my favorite ones on here and right out of here it kicks in with a weird uh middle eastern type vibe even though it sounds like a slide guitar going on so i kind of dug that i mean it still has that bluesy feel to it and like i said just a lot of big guitar but it's not distortion it's a lot of clean ish you know verging on the verge of distortion um of course billy sheehan's bass sound just over the top you know big sounding with a lot of distortion on it so you can hear all those little harmonics that's his sound that's just what it is it works for him i don't know if it would work for a lot of bass players but it works really good for him and the style he plays <clears throat> and then sunday morning kind of girl the same thing just uh all this really just straight ahead rock with that a little bit of a bluesy feel it isn't until uh who we are that things start to change up a little bit now i've heard people mention i read a couple things on this that they said the frame which is track number 10 on here the last song it's supposed to that's supposed to be the power ballad i don't know who we are sounds like a ballad to me it's like mellow although it's got a little bit of a build up in the chorus I like that song. That one's really catchy. I would classify that one as the uh, big hit ballad of the album, but I don't hear anybody else uh, calling it that. So I don't know. Strange. Uh, really thought that was pretty cool. And then we get into like as good as it gets, and you hear some interesting guitar stuff going on. There's more like processed sounds, and that's what I'm talking about with Paul's style changing a little bit. He's kind of experimenting with different sounds. I think it works really good on the song, and it's the same thing on what we were thinking, which is more upbeat again, and. Uh, and he's got that weird uh, guitar sound going on in the background, like a very processed, almost synthesized type sound going on, but it really works for the song, works for them. Uh, you know, Eric Martin sings like amazingly well. He can sing the phone book. He's just one of those guys that just sounds good no matter what he sings. So he's got some really good, you know, songs and song structures here to sing some really cool melodies over top of, and he does a really good job with the melodies. He's, you know, very good at coming up with something that's catchy and memorable. So I think he did a good job on both those two there. And then it kind of rocks back up again for the next two, Courageous and Up On You, uh, you know, just kind of hammering it out, rock what you want to hear from Mr. Big. Although, like I said, it never gets like super heavy at all and not anything close to like the first three albums anyway which for me like i just you know explained earlier was kind of the what drew me in um and then it ends with what the one i mentioned earlier the frame which is supposed to be the ballad which actually really didn't really do much for me at all uh kind of if that was the final song which it is on the regular album for me it, it would have been like a just a lame ending quite honestly but uh i got the one of the bonus track on it called eight days on the road which is just basically a showcase for uh paul gilbert and the, that intro was killer i wish they had to turn that intro into a cooler song and made that lick that he opened with a, uh just an actual song it kind of does the intro and this little lick he does there at the beginning and then it doesn't really go back to that and he just kind of like souls all over the place which is a great song killer uh, instrumental uh i actually would have made that part of the regular album kind of thrown it in the middle there somewhere but that 
as a bonus track, if they weren't going to use it, I wish they would have came up with a better use for that uh, intro that uh, Paul played there. You know, when he did uh, Green Tin and 60s Mine, he has that cool thing going on there that I've never heard anybody else play anything quite like that. It's that same inventiveness with this. It's not the same lick at all, but it's that same, oh, hey, what's going on there? That's a new thing I haven't heard on the guitar before. So I like that. So I'm going on kind of long with this review, but uh, basically my overall opinion of it, it, you got to go into it with an open mind. It's Mr. Big, but Mr. Big uh, light. I don't know, Mr. Big that's happier, <laughs> more blues. They've always had a little bit of blues in their music, but there's a lot more in this one. And, uh, yeah, the groove is going to be different. Nick does play with a different style than Pat. Uh, you can hear that throughout the album. His drumming is really phenomenal. I mean, he's a, you know, class A as all of them are on their instruments and you know class a drummer and he just does the job great but it does have a different feel to it but uh, overall i think it's a good album i hate to think this is their last one uh, you know this is their farewell tour and they're going out on their terms and all that but i would love to hear more from them i hopefully they you know they do something else but you know you know they say it's the end of the road but i know a lot of bands say that so We'll just have to sit by and back and wait and see what really happens. Uh, but uh, I'm going to end it there. As always, you know, feel free to share your comments as and you know opinions. If what you think of the album, any cool stories you like, you know, you only want to share. As always, they're welcome. And uh, like, share, and subscribe to keep this music alive. Because maybe you know, if people see that they're really interested, we'll do some more. So, <laughs> anyway, wishful thinking. But until next time, we'll see you.